Hello, Canada. I'm Foster Hewitt. And I'll be doing the play-by-play -play of tonight's key game. With the Soviets moving into a commanding lead in this series, having won three, tied one, and lost one, this sixth game is a must for Canada if they're to win or tie the eight-game series. Brian Conacher is again beside me and will do the color commentary. Brian, it's do or die tonight. Well, Foster, if Team Canada is to win tonight or at all in Moscow, they must, through puck control, slow down the tempo of the play. The Soviets are at their physical peak, while Team Canada is still two steps from it, and Canadian puck control is the only way I see Team Canada being able to slow down the play and stick with the Soviets for the full 60 minutes. And Foster, there's no way that Team Canada isn't getting support like they've never had before, even across Canada. 3,000 Canadian people over here are making more noise than 20,000 back home. Really, uh, this is really a thrill again tonight because I thought the uh, first game here, the crowd was tremendous. But the Canadian contingent really outdid themselves on this occasion. They really almost had the light pop. Thank 
and the play was stopped as the puck went over the board into the crowd. Paul Henderson gave a very effective check to the Soviet right winger there, as opposed to trying to run him right out of the rink. He pinned him against the board, took him out of the play, and then went after the puck. And this will be all important, Boss, through over 60 minutes. They definitely don't want to tire themselves out trying to run at the Soviet players. They have to make the clean check and then get back into the play. Bill Esposito is now going to center ice for Canada. Bert Y.A. is on the right wing as Park and Bergman take over on the defense. Parisi is on the left wing, Dryden in goal for Canada. Here in the early moments of the first period, no score in the game as the Canadians take it in back to their own goal. Playing a little safely here, a long pass by Park goes to center ice and it's grabbed off and knocked right back to center ice as Volskov, the new player for the Soviet, had a chance. Now Luchenko moves up, driving it in and back to the goal. One of the few times they've got rid of the puck. A roller off the board is Bartwaye failing to get away. Yeah, it took a long shot and Dryden was caught on that one. Down that far wing, Canada attacking in on goal. Park trying to fight his way through. The action is jumped by Park when he went after him. Looks like this is going to be a rough game. Again, the Soviet player went down. Yakushev is starting out on the left wing. He's one of their stars. He's carried in on the board. They Shadron is bumped against the board. This is going to be a different game. The Canadians are coming out really hitting. And the fans are starting to whistle. The Afton, the defense player, had to Yakushev. He lost it. Bergman bringing it back to center for Canada. Couldn't get over there. Bumped into the Chilean and knocked him flying. How oh, they're really hitting. The Canadian team has come out right off the bat. A long forward pass. Bill White broke it up. Slides back to Bergman. Bergman lobs it, but not out. When it was stopped by Bodnoff, that's their kid line out there, but they're changing again. Shadlov on the defense with Vasiliev. Vasiliev played it to the blue line. Kid line move up at center. And the puck went loose and is up to the blue line, but not out. And the Canadian team didn't clear out of that play. Now Bill White smeared that pass. Overstated the puck, shot it to the left wing. Lebedev couldn't stop his man, but they knocked that puck over the line. Bill White going in for it, playing it back into the opposite corner. Shot on the side and out to center ice. Lebedev trying to go in, was stopped as they made a run at him. Now Bodnov gets that puck back to the blue line where Raquel broke it up. Bill Bear was on the right wing as they clear in. Dennis Hall is on that left side, number 10. Dennis Hall is given a jolt on the board, clearing it over on this side. Bill Bear trying to clear, goes to the passes to the corner. He's covered by Paul Sev. It comes out in front, and Dennis Hall was bumped so he couldn't get his shot. Third pass to Bill White, who's gone into the Soviet zone. It hit the Canadian player, and the Soviets are trying to get that puck out. Shatilov, one of the new defense players, ahead to Mikulov. Mikulov with Har Harlamov trailing, goes into the corner. He's bumped by Berkman. Henderson, rushing back, again, off, comes down the ice, and go over the line, offside. But they didn't call it, though, so they whistle in the crowd. Ellis tried to center it out. It's knocked down by Mikulov over to Maltsev. Maltsev closing in. Right in front here to Scott. Five the save. A beautiful save on that hard shot that was ankle high. Back to Canada with Ellis passing wide. He's into the corner. Henderson is roaming out in front. Goes over to help. A long shot at front jack. And the Soviet player, Raglan, was not over. Soviet goal. Here's Henderson coming in. Back to Savard. A shot goes wide. It's over on the far wing. Henderson still trying to get it out as the Canadian team put the pressure on. A long shot right by the goal. Allen fired wide. When left uncovered in front of the net. Harlamov got it out to center right to Mikulov. 
Nikolov took his shot, right wing on, and grabbed that one and cleared it to the side. Canadians keep the right in front of their own goal, knock it on the board. It's shot out to a Soviet zone, and it's called for ice No score in the game, and they play in about five minutes and 30 seconds. This is game six of the Canada Soviet series from Moscow. From the face-off, the puck is held against the boards in that corner, goes loose, and let's try and get that puck out. It's cleared into the corner again. Bernoulli is waiting for a pass, but this stop, and now Berkman on that far side, flipped it out the center ice. Joe Esposito couldn't reach his check. The Apton played it over on that far side. It's the rush down that ball stop. Failed to get anywhere, and Canada to come up, there's a pump there. Volkov was knocked down by a hard check. Yakushev tried to get away, it stopped at center ice. The Canadians come over the line, Phil has the lead of shot! And Petjak stopped it, but it bounced wide in the corner of the net. Foster, I just have to mention, a little pushing and shoving goes on there, Phil has the lead There wasn't a whistle. It went almost five minutes without a whistle, and that is amazing. The hockey here is wide open, tremendous effort to stay on side, and so far we have seen a superb hockey game by both teams. The tail is going to face off for Canada, but they're breaking back the face off outside the Soviet blue line. The Soviets are to our right. Canada to the left, no score in the game, and plenty of hard hitting, most of it handed out by the Canadians. Patel over to Gilbert, who shoots it into the corner, Dennis fell on that left wing. The Soviets knock it to the corner, Rattel recovering, Rattel set it right in front! Oh, that was close. As Dennis Hall took a swipe at it and then. Gilbert cleared on the side, right in front for Gilbert, and his shot was blocked. He broke up the rush again. Soviets finally break up the kid line. Anderson going up, takes his shot, and the drive was high. It hit the screen. Back to the blue line. Another shot. It hit a leg. It goes wide. Two of them go down. They're going down like nine pins as they hit each other regularly. Slider to Gilbert is stopped. Shatilov got it back to Anderson, intercepted by Park. Got over to Dennis Hall, can't get in there fast enough, and he's jammed on the board by Vasilyev, and they don't clear the horses with their check. Foster, both teams have opened up full steam right off the bat here. We've gone just about seven and a half minutes, and we've seen wide open hockey from the opening period. I must comment on both the goaltenders. Kenny Dryden looks like tonight could be the night he's sharp. He's made a couple of big saves early. And Fred Jack stopped a couple of whistling shots, one by Phil Esposito. Soviets playing every man up for this baseball. No score in the game. Seven minutes and 14 seconds played in the first period. Maltsev, number 10. Harlamov on the left of him. As the puck goes into the corner, Stapleton knocked it on the board. Clark with Henderson and Ellis out there for Canada. The Soviets get that puck. Here's a shot wide as they seem to come up with that puck on frequent turns going into that corner. A forward pass. Clark lobbed it onto Henderson who's going in. He couldn't get a shot. Clark followed, took the shot, knocked it wide. It's held on the side. Goes loose to Ragulin. Raglan played it on the right side, doesn't pass to Harlamov. Harlamov was in with a high shot. Bill White hearing that drive high into the crowd. We saw Bobby Clark do there uh, something that was so important in the game uh, on Friday night when they did manage to get a couple of goals that line. is Bobby Clark getting that puck right up the ice as quickly as he can. Paul Henderson, there isn't a player out on this ice surface that can skate any faster than Paul Henderson. And he's getting in behind. And right there, they caused the Soviets some problems. Stapleton is over by the Canadian bench, getting 
some information from Harry Sinden. Stables number three. Clark is at center ice, facing off with Walt Simpson. Harlem off 17 was right there, and Bill White goes in back with the goal for Canada to Henderson. Henderson on the left side, clear to Clark, over to Bill White, a long shot wide. The Gansov goes into the corner, is bumped by Henderson, and then lost the puck to Clark to Henderson, and the drive went across the open goal. Down the left side for Maltez, over the line, closing in as they back in on a right, but the shot didn't occur. Now Raglan, number five, passed it back to the net, out in front to the blue line. Here's the shot, and again, Dryden grabbed that one and held it for a face-off, and there's nearly a mix-up right in front of the Canadian goal. Dryden did the smart thing there, Foster. The Canadian team was running around just a little bit in their end. They were getting a little scrambly. I think he anticipated this. He just said, the best thing for me to do is trap the puck, kill the play. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. A shot goes wide and still in the Canadian zone. Canada get that puck out. But Ryan waiting for a long pass is offside. But Ryan also goes to the Ampala and Frank Bader are the two West German officials. Foster, that play, even though it was offside, was a terrific move by Phil Esposito because if the Soviet defense are worried about someone with Ivan Cornoyer's speed sneaking in behind them, they will then have to play more defensively, and it'll give Canada a better chance to get out of their end. From the face-off, the Soviets get the draw, as they're often have to do. And Yakushev going down into the corner, 15, played it behind him. They jam for the puck. Shadron lost it, brought back by Bill Esposito. Cornoyer on the right, tipped it to the corner, centered it, and it's knocked down by Leapkin. He clears ahead to Shadron, and the pass was missed by Volskov. Canadians shoot it in the Soviet zone. Leapkin had the puck bounce behind him. It shot down the ice. It's going right down over the line, and will be called for icing, and the Soviets oh, will take sorry. advantage to make a change of players and they send their kid line out there with Anderson, Lebedev, and Bodnov. Soviets have to be very confident going into this game because they've dropped two of their most experienced defensemen, number two, Gusev, and number four, Kuskin, who is one of the real team leaders of the Soviet squad, and they've come back with a lot of their younger players, Shatilov, Bodnev, Anderson, and Lebedev. They're all 21 years old. Red Barons is now at center right for Canada, and Mahovlich, Peter Mahovlich on the left wing, Gilbert on the right. Park is back there with Bergman. Dryden in goal as the puck goes to the side from the corner. Gilbert shot at the center to Red Berenson. Berenson is skated off by Anderson, 22, who recovered the puck, tried to clear it out. Gilbert shoots it right back. Red Berenson missed it. Into the corner for Vasiliev. Mahovlich covered him, but didn't stop him. A pass to center ice. Bodnov cleared on the right side. The puck is loose. Anderson waiting for a pass, and it didn't arrive. And there's going to be a penalty against Canada on that play for tripping. And Bergman is going to get the call. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. Bergman gets the first penalty of the game for tripping at 10.21. The Soviets will have the odd man advantage as Canada with Peter Mahovlich dragged the puck at the Soviet line. Partially stopped, cleared it back to Stapleton, over to Park. Park then shoots it down the ice. Red Berenson out there as Peter Mahovlich is replaced by Ellis. Now Harlamov. On the left wing, 17, gets away, passes in front, and Maltsev's shot was dead on. Dryden making a great save. The Soviet trying to keep it up, 
break for Canada to center ice. Ellis took a high shot after recovering the puck. Harlemuff leads the four-man rush from the Soviets. The pass moves over on the left side. Luchenko, number three, passes to the other defense, Gantov. Into the corner. A shot over on this wing to Balsev, who missed it. Balsev now has it again. Takes a shot. It hits Park. Here he passed right in front of his own net. He passed instead of shooting. And Canada recovers. There's a break down the far side. Stapleton went racing after a pass from Red Berenson, but was called on the outside. And Berkman nearly jumped over the board. Waving a towel there at that decision. Berkman is really red hot, as you notice. Foster, I think those referees might have realized that if you go back in international hockey, you're allowed to ice the puck with the score Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. From the face-off, the puck comes back to Lyapkin, and it's called immediately on the uh, drop of the puck. As I was saying, Foster, in international hockey, I think what the mistake was there is that you are allowed to ice the puck on a penalty. In international hockey, you are not allowed to ice the puck, and I think the referee just made a mistake because he thought Bergman maybe was coming back in the ice and it should have been icing. Canadians are still a man short. No score in the game. 8.05 left in the first period as the puck goes in back to the Soviet zone. They're trying to regroup. Led by Lachenko with a long pass over on that right wing. It's back to Volskov, who gets it to Lyapkin. A shot is right in front of the goal of Strambo. And Volskov had a chance. Now it's out in front again to Lyapkin. And Bill White got that one. A break down the far side. This time for Escudado. Goes right in on goal and falls and knocks the net sideways as the two of them, Lachenko, and Phil Esposito fell into the net. This is something you'll see a lot in European and international hockey. They do not set their goal on top of uh, about four or six inch pins. They have them just with a spike on the bottom of them. So whenever you do slide into the goal, it's going to come off its mounting. This is to prevent players from getting injured. It's a good safety factor, but it causes a lot of disruption in the play because they come off the pins very easily. 7.32 left in the game of the series so far. A long shot, the puck goes rolling off to the side. Bordwine trying to make the move, is covered on the board. And Cezito fell down with the Soviet player trying to cover, and it's back at center ice. Soviets still try it. Now the teams are full strength here. Anderson trying it with a backhand that went wide. Back to the goal, cleared over on the left wing, a rush to center ice. Bill Esposito fired that one, Trenchak caught it, and a battle off, given a show by Bill Esposito. Bill Esposito, that cross check, battle off there with a stick. Esposito is going to get the game, and Esposito is certainly uh, all over that one. And Toledo gets a second penalty for Canada. And Toledo going over to the penalty box. Thirteen eleven is the uh, time of the second Canadian penalty. Mahovlich and Savard are over there getting the last word on the penalty. Whether there was a misconduct or not, it was hard to say. It looks like they, some of the fans may be ejected over there for some of the uh, strenuous efforts that are going on. I note the police over there, over by the penalty box, there's Bill Esposito. 
the meantime, Going into the corner, back to the Canadian. That's centered in front. Harlamov had a shot that was blocked. He's trying it again. Harlamov trying to draw his check. It bounced off the skate and is shot down the ice. Kutchak went out to get it. Luchenko turns in the corner. Pass to Maltsev. It hit him. Recovered at the blue line. Vasiliev made a rink-wide pass on the right board. It was offside. As that white right winger was over the blue line ahead of the pass. Coming up in the first period intermission, Foster, we're going to see how our pitcher and sound gets from Moscow back to you Canadian people. Johnny Esau will talk with one of the hockey wives, and Howie Meeker, of course, will be along to analyze the play. From the face-off, the puck comes back to Harlamov, back to his defenseman, who cleared to Lechenko, three, then back to Vikolov in front of his own net. Berenson watching him. Coming up with a pass that goes to the Canadian defense, and they tap it out at center ice. Another try. Vasiliev, then Maltsev passes on that left wing to Vikolov to Harlamov. A rink-wide pass to the other side. It's Vikolov coming from the wing. Pass to one side of the net. He was checked. Maltsev goes back to the goal. Harlamov back with his pass. Was blocked by Savard. Savard lobbed it. It's not out. Luchenko stopping it. Mahavlik finally dug it out to center ice. And the Soviet come right back only to have Lapointe break it up. Clearing on the left side with Berenson unable to get through. On that far wing, the puck is left there in the Soviet zone. Soviets on the move. Clearing a pass to Luchenko stopped by Clark who digs it back to his defense. Savard and Lapointe are ragging that puck. Savard goes in front of his own net, cut back again, breaks out at center ice, it, hanging on to that puck. Shadron finally scooped it over to that open side. Vasiliev went after it. A forward pass to Shadron. Shadron gets it over to Lyapkin, back again. To Falkov, closing in with a backhand that hit the Canadian player Lapointe. Back to the blue line. Here's the pass. Lyapkin shoots. And it's knocked down. And he broke his stick. And part of it went right into the crowd. It shot over on the far side. 4.02 left in the period. No score in the game. And Canada have had two penalties. Foster, one of the key things I see out here, and I'm glad to see him playing so well, Serge Savard. There was some talk back in Canada he might not be able to play over here because of the problems he had with one of his feet. But he is back in the game, and he's absolutely critical to Canada. The type of play they'll have to play tonight because he can control the puck. And when you can control the puck, you can control the play, and you can slow it down or speed it up, whichever is necessary. The Soviets still have the odd man advantage. Bill Esposito still in the penalty box. Bergman now shoots it down. Kretschak had to stop it. Mark is out there with them. The puck is given to Yakushev. Yakushev cleared on the right side. Volskov is taken right down on that play. And Bergman drives it down the ice. And Volskov can certainly skate. He's one of the new ones for the Soviets. A pass over on that far side is... Cleared right back on this wing. It's Lyapkin dropping a pass with Lebedev getting it over on the far side. 
Back to Lachenko. Here's the shot. It hit the defense player Park and is cleared down by Mahovlich. Peter Mahovlich. And Aniston steps on the ice. 22 for the Soviets. Bertel is out there for Canada with Mahovlich. The Soviet have the puck in the Canadian zone, clearing it into the corner. It's back of the net. A pass to Yakushev is intercepted. Peter Mahovlich breaks out at center with Rattel, going over the line, closing right in, he shoots! And a great save there by Kretschak. 2.42 left in the first period. Edison got over the Canadian line. He tried to pass to Lebedev, who was squeezed out, and Bergman lobbed it out to center ice. Canada now at full strength. It's a quick rush. Vodnov going over the line, a cleared pass on the left side, the lob is wide, it's back of the net, they scoop it out in front, Dryden covers up, and players are down again, and it's always a Soviet underneath the Canadian player, this time Bergman. Sponsor, the Soviets used their feet so exceptionally well, that puck came out there, the Soviet player knew he couldn't get his stick down, he tried to kick it in, and that's what the fuss was about, Kenny Dryden was right there, smothered the puck, and kill the possible scoring play. This game reminds me of 1955 in Crayfield when the Patriots and Dixon B hammered away at the Soviet team and won five to nothing. It's that kind of a rough and tough tussle. A swift, a rolling puck goes in wide of the goal. Anderson is bumped and taken out of the play, but the Canadians are trying to clear that puck. Bear getting it back to Bill White to Stapleton, cleared out over the line off the leg, and Canada take over with Bill White slipping it to the left wing. Dennis Hull, number 10, couldn't get it. Back to center, cleared over the line. Bodnoff rushing in to get the puck. He's trying to center it. He's covered on the play and given a heavy jolt at the same time. A forward to Bill White, Dennis Hull on the left. Here's his shot, watch it. And the drive was wide. Bounces off the boards to center ice. Rattel to Bill White. Bill White to center to Rattel. Over the line, away offside. As Devin Hull was going in. Vasiliev mixing it up with the Canadian player Gilbert, number eight. Dennis Hull was right there, too. A minute and 22 seconds left in the first period. No score in the game. And the goalkeepers are certainly having a, a busy time, both Ken Dryden and Frutjak. Ellis, all ready to go, keeps moving around in circles. It's Clark, Henderson, and Ellis out there now for Canada with Bill White and Stapleton, Maltsev, Harlamov, and Vikolov up there, up there for the Soviets. At center ice, the puck is knocked over the line. Henderson trying it again. Cleared it with the help of Clark into the Soviet zone. The puck is knocked out by Bill White as they tried to clear, but he couldn't control it. Maltsev is stopped and shoved around a bit. Zagankov lost it. Ragulin clears it, and Harlamov goes in on that wing. Passed it. Here's right back. Right front. Stapleton right beside him. Canada just about gave away a goal right there. A careless play, a drop pass that Harry Sinden talked about before the game. You just can't do it against the Soviets. Vikulov comes right in, and if it wasn't for a little bit of luck and Ken Dryden being right on the ball, we might have been losing one to nothing. 46 seconds left in the first period. No score in the game. A slider to Dryden. And Dryden just played it very carefully. All set now with the Soviet playing every man up. Buck is taken by Savard on the right wing. Gets it to Ellis to Henderson. Henderson tried to go in. The puck went right to Petjak, and Henderson didn't give up one moment. And Clark was shoved almost into the side of the net. This line is working exceptionally well. It has all throughout the series, but I noticed the second that Clark got the puck 
Henderson was yelling. And the puck came right up to him. Of course, he got a good chance there. The Bard and LaPointe are the defense playing up for Canada. No score in the game. The puck goes to Harlemov, 17. Over the line, Maltsev missed, uh, missed his pass. Maltsev was trailing. A bouncer, Kretschak, had it cleared by Raglan, but not out. Henderson couldn't get a shot. The Soviet sent four men up at center ice. Henderson broke it up, went into his own goal, lost the puck, and nearly uh, handed them a great scoring chance on that play. Lack of clearing and getting rid of that puck. It's into the corner, jamming there, and the siren goes to end the first period. And what a first period it was. With the score, Canada nothing and the Soviets nothing. This is game six from Moscow. All set now with the teams warming up very quickly for the start of the second period. And it'll be questionable whether the Canadian team will carry on the heavy hitting or decide to try and uh, do a little finesse going in on that Soviet defense. But the key to this game, to me, I still have to believe is puck control. And although Team Canada played an excellent first period, the heavy hitting might tell over 60 minutes. I hope not, but it could happen that way. So Team Canada... Uh, the body's been very effective so far. I just hope it doesn't take its toll as the game progresses. But the uh, Canadian team have suffered as a result of those uh, heavy checks. They've had actually three penalties, two to Esposito on the same call, and Bergman, who was put off for tripping, and Esposito, a, two, a double minor for charging. And they were... They were, there was no doubt that uh, Esposito had defeated the uh, Soviet player rather roughly, but it seemed more of a, a question of a cross-check rather than charging. And charging first, there's no doubt about that. There's a look at one of the young players who was inserted into the lineup for tonight's game, number 30, Volskov. The Soviets certainly haven't, Foster, been hesitant to use any and all the players they have on their 35-man roster. They've changed them all around. They've gone with young players, old players, and then they've mixed up lines even. Well, the uh, Soviets are going to start off with Yakushev, Shadron, and Voskov. He's the uh, new addition to this line. He's number 30, and he's quite a speedster. Canadian team have Parisi on the uh, left wing, and Phil Esposito is at center ice for Canada, and the puck goes rolling into the Canadian zone, and it was offside. So the face-off will be at the Canadian blue line. Phil Esposito will take it with Shadron. Barnoyer is over there on the right wing, getting in motion. He pulled out to center ice too fast and has to get back into the uh, position. From the face-off, the puck goes in on that right side, the Vard on that wing with LaPointe on the defense. Puck rolls towards the Canadian goal. It's knocked into the corner. Shot over on the wing. Here's Lucheco getting a chance, and the drive was high and wide. Martin for Canada made a rink-wide pass. Parisi is rushing in to get in and didn't get up there in time. The one thing you might have noticed uh, on that play is that at the back of the boards here around the end zone of the rink, it is not glass, it is a netting. And so when the puck hits it, it has a great tendency to almost catapult back, and very often it comes back faster than it hits the, the netting, and sometimes the rebounds are very hard to control. Face off will be to the left of Dryden. No score in the game. Early moments of the second period. And LaPointe goes back to the Canadian goal. Shot it on the boards, but not out. Shadron passed to the corner. They're working in back of the goal. Blocked by Phil Esposito, but not cleared out. The Apkin shoots it into the corner. It's LaPointe recovering for Canada. Passing ahead on the left wing. Parisi comes down the left side. Left the puck. Here's Cornwallis shot. It hit a leg. A three-man break for the Soviets. Two on one. Yakushev coming in on the defense. And his shot went wide. As he tried to pick the left corner. Yakushev knocks Cornwallis over. Another drive from the blue line. It's over! On the blue line, a long shot. I don't think it 
was deflected, it may have been. We'll have to wait to see what happens on that play. A little scrambly. Canada gets running around a little bit. Dryden really had no chance on this puck. It was very low right along the ice. I don't believe it was deflected. And it caught Dryden back in the net a little bit. He couldn't get his eye on it. The Soviets take a one to nothing lead on a long shot from the point by number 25, Lyapkin. Shots was made from the blue line. This is score. Soviets one, Canada no score. This is game six from Moscow. Goal was scored by Lyapkin, the defense player who fired it from the blue line. Yakushev got credit for the assist as he played it back to him. It was a long shot that eluded Dryden and gives the Soviet Union a one nothing lead. Now then the Canadian team come closing in. Petriak stopped that one and then the puck with, was hit with a high stick by the Canadian player and it was called as a result. That type of goal on a, on a goaltender is a real nightmare, Foster, because what a goaltender hopes will happen on a situation like that is he's quite ready to handle the shot from the point, but he wants the traffic cleared out from in front of him so he can get his eyes on it, and I don't believe Dryden never had a chance on that. It was a long shot, about 50 feet, and from the left side, and uh, no one really deflected it. It just went right into the corner. Yakushev got credit for the assist and really made the play possible. It was a long shot. Canadian player was covered in the corner there. There's going to be a penalty call on that one. Here's a high sticking deal here with Clark uh, getting ready. But nothing developed. Gantzoff uh, was in on that with him. 1751 left in the second period. one nothing for the Soviets. With the score, the Soviets won, and Canada no score. This is game six from Moscow. Penalty to the Soviets on that play. Ragulin gets an interference penalty. Ragulin off for the Soviets, and that's the first Soviet penalty of the game. We have 2.09 played of the second period. A minor penalty, two minutes to Ragolin, the defense player for the Soviets. Already the Canadians have had three penalties there. Two and two to Esposito and one to Bergman. Uh, Ragolin was in the wrong penalty box. He was in the uh, one... Uh, more or less reserved for the Canadians. So he had to get out and move back. Now Canada will have the odd man as Bergman waits for a pass with Park. Park has the puck into the side. A pass to Phil Esposito was knocked down. Gilbert couldn't, uh, rather Ellis couldn't get it over. He and Henderson are out there trying to take advantage of this uh, penalty. Rickola centered out in front. It's intercepted by Marlamov. And back to Mikulov, who's going to get a try. Pass to the left wing. They shoot it to the side. And the Soviets immediately take up uh, an attacking stance. Every chance they get when they're a man short. Canada attacking Park. Passed over to Phil Esposito. Going into the corner, Lachenko deflected it back of the net. They squeeze the Gantlov out. Canada recovers, Henderson centers out it. Oh, and Esposito had a direct shot on the net, and Kutchak made the save of the night for the Soviet. Petrov is coming out for the first time with Mihailov for the Soviet. Phil Esposito was parked in his favorite spot, 15, 20 feet out, right in the slot area. He let a good shot go, he got good wood on it, and Tretjak was there to beat him once again. We see Ragulin in the penalty box, and of course, that is the Russian script over the picture. Ready for the face-off. Back to the blue line. Park, pass to the boards on that far wing. Ellis 
trying to get that puck out from the corner. Esposito waiting for the pass. He tried to deflect it and went wide. From the corner, they couldn't shoot it away. Canada with Henderson getting it over to Park on the far side. Park coming in with a pass, lost it. A high loft is out there, just racing down the ice as the puck goes to the corner. The point was able to knock it away. The point got it back to the goal to Park. Soviet still a man short. A high loft is out there for the first time with Petrov. Puck is shot right in back of the Soviet goal, cleared out on the right side, a race for it. Dryden steps out of his net, goes back to the goal. Park is chased into the corner. Petrov stopped him. And the Canadian team failed to get past center ice. Esposito let that puck go loose. It's into the corner for the point. Back over on the corner. As Canada starts moving slowly up to the blue line, some real good forechecking by the Soviets. Dennis Hull, number 10 for Canada, nearly lost it there. He did. It goes loose at Dryden. Shot it against the boards. The Canadian team break out. A pass to Dennis Hull on the left wing. Phil Esposito couldn't get a try as it's intercepted. Shot over on the wing and Park failed to block his man. He blocked the man, but... Had to go back after the puck. Park shot it out and down the ice. The Apkin goes into the corner to shoot it out. Yakutsev pass. Here's Shadron passing back, and he stopped. Down for Gilbert at center. Over the line. The shot hit the defenseman. Another chance for Gilbert. A shot right on. Another one. The score! Canada has tied it up. Raquel was in on that. Canada ties the floor from a scramble, and Phil Esposito was right in on top of the goalkeeper. I believe it's Dennis Hall who gets the goal here, and he kicks the rebound right out of the air, throws it right up on the top of the net. A beautiful goal by Dennis Hall, who stood right in the right position. He anticipated the rebound and came out to it. He kicked it out of the air and batted it into the top of the net. Canada's right back into the game. We can see this developing out of the end zone. Rod Bear, good puck control up the right-hand side. His shot is blocked. Now, Paul comes out of nowhere, throws it up top. Good goal for Canada. They're on their way again at center ice. Soviet at full strength. At one all time. As they jam against the board, Dennis Hall getting credit for the goal. Bill Esposito was lying on the goalkeeper. Now a break in center ice. Mark Boye goes tearing after it. Goes into the corner. Pass right front. And the Canadian player fell as he tried to get the pass. Down the, for Lebedev. Over on the left side. A shot is right and knocked that down. Mark Boye playing it over on the wing. Red Berenson. His pass is intercepted. Pat Stapleton shoots it up at center ice. And it's recovered by Lebedev. Who's stopped by Red Berenson. Parise to Red Berenson, going back to the net. Lebedev was knocked over. Here's a chance, a shot from the blue line. Was blocked by here's Stapleton getting it away. It's back to the net, Berenson shoots the score! Bernoye got it in from Red Berenson. Bernoye for Canada, from Berenson, to give a Canada Canadian team a two to one lead. Watch the puck bounce off the back net here and gain it comes out with a good scramble. And Cornoyer anticipates it, walks right in on top of the goaltender and jumps it right back between his legs. Now watch this high shot. It comes up from the point where he's able to hit the backboard right out in front. It was a Cornoyer. He fired it right to the right back. Canada now leads 2 to 1. Two fairly fast goals, Dennis Hull and then Kurt Waye and Berenson. And two of the three have been added starters. Now then, Canada coming up. It's good to go! Henderson! Let's go the long drive. And Canada takes the two goal lead. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. A very fast goal. Paul Henderson beats Fred Jack with a shot he never saw. Never got a chance to move on this. He wasn't set. 
Cover the face off, tried to go in on the defense. Bergman tapped it out. Henderson lost it. Harlemoff is knocked down by Bergman, and Bergman wasn't particular how he handled him. Cleared pass to Clark, who turns at the blue line. Clark is picking his way out at center ice. Lob one into the corner. Sugankov shoots it back to the net. 
Raglan is waiting for a pass, but it comes up to the blue line of center and is shot right back into the Soviet zone. Raglan going after it, but Canada called for icing as a result of that clear pass. 10.22 left in the second period, 3-1. to one. And there's the penalty box. Canadian bench, rather. Harry Sinden standing back of it. The referee is speaking to the two players facing off. And the puck is knocked down. The Gansoff knocked to the head with his glove. The whistle blows, but it's awfully hard to hear it with the crowd going as well as the whistling. Five thirteen was the time of the Dennis Hull goal. Six twenty-one was the time of the Cornwallier goal from Berenson. And uh, six thirty-six was the Henderson goal. Dennis Hull was goal was unassisted, as was Henderson, which was a fairly long shot. The Aptons scored from Yakushev for the Soviets, the first score of the, of the game, and at 2-12, all the scoring in the second period. 3-1 to for Canada, as the puck goes back to Ragolin, number five. They're five aside, both teams a man short. Soviet moves to the attack at center ice. Harlamov passes back. Here's a roller in front, a shot. Knocked down by Bergman, who fell in front of it. And there's going to be a penalty, I believe, on this one. Here's a mix-up. And the uh, Soviet player shoved a bit. Now Bergman goes over to the Soviet player, puts the uh, threatens of a bit at Harlamov and Bergman. Well, that nearly started something. And if they don't understand English, it doesn't really mean whatever they're saying. But they're cooling them out, but there'll be penalties as a result of that. We'll see whether it's just Bergman or a player from each team. Fever, this game is reaching a fever pitch, and they're really hitting each other hard. Tempers are flaring at every opportunity. Harlamov comes over to the Soviet bench, and uh, seems to be uh, rather exhausted from whatever check he took. They're standing around as if they're waiting for something to happen, but it's finally Clark that is going over. Berkman did all the uh, shoving after, but only as a result of what happened apparently to Clark. So Clark gets the gate. There's no Soviet penalty. So Clark is off and Canada will play four men to five. Basilio, LaPointe, and Clark are in the penalty box. No, Bergman didn't even get a penalty for doing the shoving that he did. But that was all as a result of Clark's mix-up. Canada playing four men to five. Now the referee is going over to the penalty box. Apparently there's a fair amount of confusion as to what it's all about. Harry Sinden's asking Hello, Bill Estimator to try and clear it up. given, as well as the minor penalty to Clark for slashing. We know one thing, Foster, that the referee obviously can speak English. So it's uh, a 10-minute misconduct to Clark, as well as the minor, and he's a valuable man to have off for that period of time. And the Canadian team will have their troubles while they're Playing two men short, the Soviets won. As a result, Cornwallier is going over there to come back on when the uh, Clark's two-minute slashing penalty is over. 
From the faceoff, Phil Esposito carries in back of his own goal. The puck is back of the net to Pat Stapleton, who drives it off the boards and down the ice. The Gansoff, number seven, going back to get it. Out there with Lachenko. Petrov is on one side. Here's the puck up at center. The Soviets are at full strength. The puck goes to Volstev. Off to the side. They jam into the corner. The Soviets drop, blocked it. Lachenko's drive went way up into the crowd. Now they're claiming that the Soviet player came on before he should have. The time isn't up, he has seconds left, and uh, that's the result of all this mix-up. They're trying to find out what's going on. And it's Bill Esposito over there at the penalty box, as Canada now two men short, the Soviet at full strength. I can only say one thing, Foster, about all of this. From experience, you're wasting your time and a lot of anxiety by trying to argue with the referee. Canada would be better at this stage just to settle down, accept what has happened, and get back in this hockey game because right now the Soviets are trying to, this is working to their advantage more than it is to the Canadians if the Canadians are getting upset about these penalties and so on. You can't do anything about it, just play hockey. And they face off, the puck is shot down the ice. Canada, a man short, Soviet at full strength. They misconned it, is being served now. Mihailov coming in on the right wing. Petrov is in front. A pass back to the blue line. Zagankov shot was stopped by Red Berenson, who breaks away up over the line. He's ahead near the shot. And Kutchak made a good save on Red Berenson, who made a real bid there for a scoring play. 3-1 to one for Canada. Canada, a man short. The puck just carried in back to the goal. The puck rolls off to the side. The Soviet recover, only to have Peter Mahovlich shoot it out off his leg to center ice. Lachenko cleared it over the line. Bill White took his man out. Stapleton bumped into Harlamov, knocked him down, and made sure he stayed down. The Team Canada certainly respect Harlamov because they're giving him a lot of attention tonight. Every time they get a chance, they're taking him for a run.